Welcome to the tutorial Lip Sync. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to move the karate rabbit's mouth so that it matches a piece of recorded dialogue. So unlike in the first two tutorials where I did not provide you with a scene or with sound clips because I don't have the right to distribute them and therefore ask you to use your own, I'm going to provide you with four sound bites for this tutorial. So the one I've selected is First Bite, and let me play it so you can listen to what it sounds like. The act of taking the first bite is what separates the winners from the losers. So you can select whichever of the four you'd like to follow along with this tutorial. The other elements that we have in our layer stack in the timeline just to go over is the first one is just a piece of hand that I had to draw um, so that this thumb would cover the carrot. The carrot I took from the scene before from the fighting cloud. We have our karate master template. The entire body extends beyond what you see in the frame. We have our camera hooked up to a peg, which I've zoomed in to this position. And we have a color card, which as I explained in a previous tutorial, is great to use for the background instead of drawing a large rectangle as you don't have to keep extending it like a drawing every time you increase the number of cells in your scene. So up until this point, you may have wondered what these um, eight thumbnails are in the layer properties view for a sound sample. So these eight mouth positions are industry standard mouth positions known as phenomes and each phenome covers a number of sounds commonly heard in the English language. So don't get fooled by the letter. This mouth position does not represent the mouth forming the letter A but is instead represented by the letter A. And if we look at a document that I'm going to include in the tutorial sample material, you can see a list of the eight industry standard phenomes and the two extra mouth positions, so usually two unusual positions um, that are also drawn here. And you can see below which sounds each mouth shape is supposed to represent. So mouth shape A, for example, is supposed to represent the sounds made by saying the letter B, M, or P. Mouth shape B is supposed to represent the sounds made by D, H, I, J, K, S, and T. So these are like breakdowns that have already been done for you. Um, and so it's really just a simple chart that you can follow to draw the route positions. I'm not going to draw the mouth positions in this tutorial because they've actually already been drawn in pack number seven. However, just a warning to people using pack number seven, um, I realized afterwards that some of them were not drawn correctly. So this scene has the correct positions for both the front and the three-quarter view. However, if you just want to see how to draw mouth positions in general, I will refer you to pack number seven. So the first thing I'd like to show you is how to create a mouth shapes chart. So let's go to the X sheet for a minute and if we look at our sound column, the one that says first bite, and we change our display setting to mouth shapes and we scroll down, you can see that every cell is filled with the mouth shape X and that's because a mouth shape chart hasn't been created yet. So there are three ways that you can create a mouth shape chart. You can right click on any of the cells in the sound layer and select lip sync, auto lip sync detection. Or you could go to the top menu and select animation, lip sync, auto lip sync detection. Or you could launch the sound editor, then right click on the waveform in the sound element and select auto lip sync detection. Then if we close the sound element editor and we go back to the X sheet, we'll see that the sound column is now filled with different letters, so different phenomes. So at this exact frame, the sound that is heard from the sound file best represents phenome B for a character's mouth shape. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to perform a manual lip sync detection. So in order to do this, you need the sound scrubbing enabled, which it is right here, as well as the data view open. So I don't know if you remember, but from a previous tutorial, in order to find a layer easily in the timeline, 
you can select its corresponding drawing first in the camera view. So I'm going to select the karate rabbit's mouth and then click on this button here, center on selection, and it opened up our karate rabbit master template and brought us to the mouth layer and it brought us to the drawing layer, so not just the peg layer but the actual drawing layer. So to form a manual lip sync detection, what you basically need to do is just scrub across until you hear a sound that's very obvious to you. Sometimes it's the letter O or uh, maybe a hard consonant sound like with a D or an H. And then you can decide at that point to change this mouth position. And you can do that in two ways. You can either hover over this blue word in the data view, which is the name of the drawing, until your cursor turns into a white hand with a double-headed arrow, and then scroll across until you see the desired drawing appear, or you can do it through the library view. But let me just go over a few things quickly first. If you recall, in the data view, you can see the name of the layer, so in this case it's the Karate Rabbit Mouth, and afterwards, the word in blue represents the name of the drawing. So if we go back to the X sheet, you'll, you'll see the same thing. You can see the name of the layer, which is also the name of the column, so Karate Mouth. And then you can see the name of the drawing that inhabits that specific cell or frame. So I renamed the drawings for the Karate Rabbit's mouth. Um, if you see an F, it indicates front. If you see a Q, it represents three-quarter. And if you see a P, it indicates profile. So that's the first letter in the, the dual letter code. The second letter is, of course, the name of the phenome. So this is a front view phenome E. You might see like QA, for example, so three-quarter view phenome A. So that's how you would decipher the drawing name. So as I mentioned, you can also do drawing substitutions through the library view, and you can do it through the drawing substitution window. So if we keep scrubbing a bit, I hear kind of like a TS sound, so I can scroll through until I find the appropriate drawing. So say that, for example. So as you can see, as I scrub back and forth with the drawing substitutions made, you get the impression that the Karate Rabbit is speaking. So let me just change a few more phenomes. Then if I bring the little black arrowhead over to here and I press on the loop button and then press play. So you get the idea that the karate rabbit is beginning to look like he's actually speaking. So this is a little bit laborious um, in terms of trying to get the mouth positions match to the words being said in the soundbite. So luckily, Animate and Animate Pro have devised a way of doing this lip sync detection automatically. 
So if we go back to the X sheet, you'll remember that we produced a mouth shapes chart together in the sound column. So in the first byte sound column, um, we now know which phenome corresponds to which frame. So the only thing we're missing is a way of equating this phenome with a specific drawing for this view and then sending that information back to the karate mouth layer. So that's exactly what has already been programmed into the software for us. So we're going to go back to the top and select our first byte layer and we're going to map our mouth positions automatically and we can do that in three different ways. We can once again select any cell in the sound layer, right click and select lip sync, map lip sync. Or we can go to the top menu, select animation, lip sync, map lip sync. Or we can go back to the layer properties for our sound layer and then click on the map button. So in our lip sync mapping dialog box, you'll see that the first field indicates the source layer, which is our sound layer. That's where we're taking our phenome sounds from. The place that we want to then send um, this information is our destination layer, and that's the karate mouth layer right here. We haven't used any symbols so far in our uh, template or I don't think are seen for that matter so this is not um, enabled but if you do use symbols then it'll give you the option to also send this information um, into a symbol as well. So now what we're going to do here is provide um, what our standard phenome is to what our drawing name is that represents that standard phenome. So of course in this instance A would be FA B would be FB, C would be FC, and so on and so forth. And that's exactly why I renamed uh, the drawing so this would become a lot easier than trying to equate numbers and letters to uh, phenome names. So then if we say OK, you'll notice that a change happened here. And what we did, if we go back down to the mouth layer is you can see that the software now has decided which drawing substitution should be represented in each frame. And in fact if these columns were side by side, the karate mouth column and our sound layer, let's go to the top and I'll show you. So. The drawing FX lasts from frame 1 to frame 10, where it's then replaced by FB. So then if we scroll across, we'll see that indeed the phenome X lasts from frame 1 until frame 10. You can see it here. And then it calls for phenome B. So you can see that information being relayed back and forth from the sound column to the karate mouth column. So let me just draw this playback arrow back to the end of our scene and I'll play this for you to show you what it looks like. The act of taking the first bite is what separates the winners from the losers. The act of taking the first bite is what separates the so I think that's pretty cool. Um, however, sometimes after you've allowed the software to map phenomes to your character's various mouth positions, you may realize there are a few that don't look quite accurate. Well, this is not a problem because you can easily mix the automated lip sync detection with the manual process. So to do this, you have to go back to your sound layer and double click on it to launch the sound element editor. Then in the sound element section, scroll to the frame where you think you might be having a problem. So in my case, it's frame 36. And we can see that at frame 36, the phenom that is currently being represented there is B. So it's as easy as clicking on another phenom that you think is more precise. So in my case, I think it might be F. So this changes the information 
for the sound layer and because the sound layer is relaying its information to the karate rabbit's mouth layer, it in turn is also um, updated. So now that you've manually overridden one of the phenomes, you have to actually remap your mouth positions uh, to the correct phenome. So once again, we're going to select karate rabbit mouth. We're going to enter the names of our mouth drawings to correspond to the proper phenome. And we're going to say OK. So now if we look in the X sheet view, we can see that frame 36, which we changed to F, has been changed to the FF mouth drawing for frame 36 in the karate mouth column or layer. And just to let you know, you can do all of this um, through the view menu in the X sheet as well. You can go to lip sync, change mouth shape to, and once again change that mouth shape at the selected frame, and then once again remap. And of course it's better to do all your changes first and then map in one go instead of mapping for each change. So the only problem with this is that um, somewhere along the line, if you decide that you want to edit your sound layer, such as by moving it down the timeline, and you have to re-perform um, the auto lip sync detection, which is what fills the sound column with the proper phenome, then all of your manual overrides will be lost. So of course it's better to make sure your sound file is edited and placed exactly where you want it before you get into any automatic or manual lip sync detection. So the last thing that I wanted to show you is something that I touched upon in the last tutorial, and that's how to create two levels of lip syncing. For example, if I'd like to change the perspective of the karate rabbit's head, partway through his speech from the front view to that of the three-quarter profile. The problem with that is that I would need to have a second sound layer to map the phenomes for the mouth position in the three-quarter profile. So I couldn't use the same sound layer. So let me go through the steps and it'll become more clear. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an empty sound layer. Then I'm going to decide the position at which I would like the head to change position. So I'm just going to arbitrarily choose frame 50. So I'm going to select the sound wave from frame 50 to the last frame of the scene. And then I'm going to pull it down and drop it in the empty sound layer. So now the first part of the sound clip up to frame 50 exists in the first byte layer and the second sound layer labeled sound has the rest of the dialogue. So now at frame 50, what I can do is collapse the Karate Master group, select frame 50 at that point, add a keyframe, then select just the head of the Karate Rabbit, find it in the timeline view. So it's actually right here. I'm not sure why it wasn't selected. There we go. And then go to the library, and if you remember from our previous tutorials at the end of pack 7, we created a bunch of templates that we thought might be useful of the Karate Rabbit in different positions as well as just his head in different positions. So I believe that's in the Animate Pro library and in the Karate Rabbit folder. So if we grab the Karate Rabbit's three-quarter head template, which just happens to be selected, and we drag it down, and it finds its identical match, we can drop it exactly at frame 50. And if you can see, we now have a perfect flip between the front view and the three-quarter profile view. And that's way easier than going through each and every one of these uh, layers, each eyebrow, each eyeball, each nose and mouth layer, and then swapping the drawings for the three-quarter position in the data view. So this is, of course, much faster. But now what we have to do is once again generate mouth positions for the three-quarter view. So we do this by going to our new sound layer and I might actually rename them as well. So we can call this first byte and let's name it front view.
And this one, let's name first byte and name it three quarter view. So we know that much. So right now what we're seeing here are the front positions for the mouths, but that's not what we want. So to erase all that, we're going to do another automatic lip sync detection. So we're going to do that by clicking anywhere on this layer and selecting lip sync, auto lip sync detection. So now for this layer in the X sheet view, the three quarter view, we have to change the display from sound display mouth shapes. So we didn't see it, but this was actually filled with X's before. And now after frame 50, it's filled with different phenome positions. Then what we have to do is go back to the layer properties, click on map, and once again we have to map the different phenomes to their correct drawings. This time our source layer, however, is not just first byte, um, which we've now changed to first byte front view, but it's first byte three quarter view. And we want it to go back to the mouth layer, so it will still go back to the same layer for the karate rabbit. We just need two different sound layers. And then once again we will map. So this time, instead of being FA, it will be QA for three quarter. And there you go, so now the mouth has righted itself. And if we scroll across, you can see that at, at the very least, they're all in the three-quarter position. And once again, you can go through and manually change any of the mouths you think might not be as accurate as you would like it to be. So that's it for the tutorial lip sync, and it's also the last tutorial in the sound video tutorial series.